Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga 370. A lot of uh, brand names here. Uh, this is an all-in-one with a ThinkPad keyboard and trackpad built in, so you get the nicer build quality of a ThinkPad along with some features that we have seen on some of the Lenovo Yoga 2-in-1s in the past. So we're going to be taking a closer look at this in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo, so when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed this content before I uploaded it. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, this starts at around $1,250 and the price escalates from there. Uh, ThinkPads are typically more expensive than Lenovo's other consumer laptops. In fact, you're gonna hear me talk a little bit about the Yoga 720 that we looked at a few months ago. Uh, that is really the uh, consumer version of this one, which uh, begins at around $800 or so. So the ThinkPads do cost more, but I do like the, the materials they use to make them. And of course they have some features that corporate America might like. The one we're looking at today uh, is kind of the lower end one. It's got an i5-7200U processor, eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte solid state disc. It has a 13.3 inch IPS display. It is a 1080p display. The viewing angles aren't terrific on it, but the display overall looks pretty nice. I do wish it was a little bit brighter. It does seem to be a little dimmer than I've seen some other Lenovo displays be. Uh, but you do have all the two-in-one features you might expect from a uh, Lenovo Yoga laptop here. So you can put the keyboard down here and run it in display mode and you get your uh, touch display here to move things around with, of course. And then you can uh, also put it into tent mode if you want to do something like this, or you can even uh, put it down into tablet mode. I'm going to show you a pen in a few minutes too, so you can do some uh, pen-based stuff on the computer if you want. One neat little touch on this, which is partly why these uh, ThinkPads cost a little more, is that it will lock the keyboard physically when you move the device into tablet mode. So typically these devices will uh, disable the keyboard inside the computer, but they don't disable the keys. This one actually pushes the uh, front uh, little bezel here up on the keys and uh, basically locks them down so you don't really feel them pushing. They do give a little bit, but not as much as they would if you have it in uh, regular keyboard mode where you get all the usual travel of your keyboards. You can see here when I flip this thing back around, the space bar barely moves here. So that's kind of a neat little touch to it. Makes it a little bit easier to hold it in tablet mode, but I've often found these uh, ThinkPads and other two-in-ones get a little unwieldy when they are in that tablet configuration. And the weight on this one comes in at 3.03 pounds or 1.37 kilograms, and they used a carbon fiber material. They call it a carbon fiber hybrid. I'm not sure what it's hybriding with, but uh, it does feel very nice. It doesn't feel like plastic. It's got a nice texture to it. Uh, very strong, but also very lightweight as well. So really nice to see some of the lower end ThinkPads getting some unique materials. Of course, on the more expensive ThinkPads, you get uh, all these specialized metals like magnesium and other alloys, but uh, here you've got something unique as well. Uh, the crowning feature of ThinkPads, in my opinion, are the keyboards, and this one certainly feels like a ThinkPad keyboard. It's nicely backlit. Uh, you got tremendous travel on these keys, very nice tactile response to them. If you've been using ThinkPads over the years, this will uh, largely feel the same. Uh, you do get the little nub here in the middle for uh, moving your mouse cursor around if you prefer that method of movement, but you also get a fully functional trackpad here and uh, buttons on top and the trackpad also clicks. So you have a lot of options for pointing the mouse on this thing and all of them are very high quality with nice travel and really feel uh, quite nice and accurate. So I'm quite pleased with all of that. They got a fingerprint sensor over here as well. And I think they have some options for using security cards. I know some folks who are in the uh, military use those cards to get access to their computers. I think that's an option on some of the other versions of this laptop. This one doesn't have that. Now let's take a look at some ports. We've got a USB 3.0 port over here. Uh, this is a network jack that I think is kind of unique to uh, Lenovo's line of computers. So you can get a physical ethernet connection uh, plugged in there, or of course you could use a USB uh, ethernet adapter if you wish. Uh, over here is not only a USB type C port, but also a Thunderbolt port. And uh, this is a fully functional uh, Thunderbolt USB-C port. So you can plug it into a dock and get uh, video out along with power in and all of your data connections to it as well. Uh, the Thunderbolt connection though is a two lane Thunderbolt connection. Some of the newer Lenovo's we've looked at have a four lane. Uh, those lanes are important for the amount of data that can pass through simultaneously 
on these ports, but as we've seen in some of our testing, if you are connecting up an external graphics card, for example, uh, those two lane ports here can drive a GTX 1070 GPU at its fullest potential. And you can also charge it with the included power adapter. They do have their proprietary connector on here still. 45 watts is what this requires, so look for that if you are planning to charge over that USB-C Thunderbolt port. On the other side, we've got some other stuff to take a look at. First is a Kensington lock, so you can lock it down on your desk. You have a full-size HDMI output for connecting up to external displays, but uh, remember that Thunderbolt port can also output to external displays, so you can go out through the Thunderbolt port and through the HDMI here in addition to using the onboard display if you want. You've got another full-size USB 3 port over over here. Uh, right here is a spot for a micro SD card that you can put in and have it sit flush to the side of the computer. Below that is a SIM card, and some models of this laptop support uh, 4G connections, so you can plug in a SIM card there and get wireless data wherever you go. Headset microphone combo jack there, and the power button is right there. And the really cool thing about this is that it has a built-in active pen that you pull out from the side of the computer here, and it charges itself when it's inside of its cradle here. You can see the little charging contacts there. Uh, so I'm just gonna flip this into uh, tablet mode here for a second so you can see how all of this works. And the pen uh, works a lot like other uh, pens that we've seen on the Windows platform. So when you get close to the screen, it begins tracking uh, where the pen is going and then it does detect pressure here. So if I push down harder, I get a different kind of line than if I push down less hard. And uh, it does have pretty good wrist detection here as well. So it really is a, a pretty fully functional pen. You've got uh, two little buttons here for doing your erase or other functions that you've programmed into your uh, particular application that you're using. And it's kind of nice just to have this thing so tightly integrated. And a lot of times I'm seeing these smart pens have uh, batteries that you have to replace. In many cases, they have two different types of batteries. Uh, this one just charges up when it's inside the computer and you're good to go. Battery life on this one came in at around seven or eight hours an hour testing. If you're doing some uh, low end tasks like word processing or email and that kind of stuff, uh, when you start piling on more intensive tasks, obviously the battery life will be reduced. Adjusting display brightness always does make a difference there. Fan noise is you know, audible on this one, not as bad as the Yoga 720. So you do have an air intake over here and it exhausts in between the uh, display and the keyboard deck here. Uh, there's also some speakers that are in uh, this spot right here. They're actually pretty loud. I like the fact that they put them in here and not on the bottom, but there's not a lot of range to the sound. So I would suggest if you want a uh, better audio quality for music or that kind of thing uh, to plug in some headphones on it. So overall, nice build quality to this one. One, and I really like that pen feature, but let's take a look now and see how this performs. So let's kick things off with some web browsing. We'll start off with my YouTube channel here, and you can see we're running a 1080p 60 video without any issues whatsoever. That's what we would expect out of a processor of this generation, so no issues there. Uh, general web browsing was also working very nicely on here. We went over to uh, nasa.gov and everything loaded up very quickly without any slowdown, so uh, that was good as well. Uh, we got a score on the speedometer benchmark of 124.9, which puts it right in line with every other i5-7200U laptop that we've looked at uh, over the last year here, so no problems there. And as expected, Microsoft Word ran quite nicely on here with our newsletter template. I would expect similar performance out of other Office applications. Now, of course, this being a business machine, it is not designed for gaming, but it can play games. And of course, we always like to look at Minecraft and we were running it here about anywhere from 30 to 50 frames per second at 1080p using the Optifine Performance Enhancing plug-in. So that worked out okay for us here. Uh, we also took a look at Rocket League with all the settings turned down at 1080p. We were getting around 25 to 30 frames per second on Rocket League. And I was noticing that, especially with Rocket League, it was running a little slower than it did on the Yoga 720, which again is the consumer version of this particular laptop. And it became clear when we ran the 3D Mark uh, benchmark test, the CloudGate test, to why that was. So take a look at the results there on the 3D Mark test. Uh, the 370 here got a score of 4,822, while the Yoga 720 got 5,886 with the same processor. And the reason is, is that the Yoga 720 has its RAM configured in dual channel configuration, whereas this one is in single channel configuration, which means it can't get data to the graphics subsystem as quickly. And as such, we saw graphics 
graphics scores better on the Yoga 720 than we saw on this particular laptop. So uh, that was something that stuck out for us in our testing. The lower cost Yoga 720 might do a little better than uh, the more expensive business oriented ThinkPad here. But if you're using this for work, they probably don't want you playing games on it anyhow. Now we did take a look inside to see if you could upgrade to a dual channel configuration by adding an additional module. Uh, you can't do that because there is only one RAM slot inside of this computer. So while the RAM is upgradable, uh, you can't get two in here to give you that dual channel performance. So you're going to be uh, limited a little bit in that way. Uh, but we did find you can also update the onboard storage if you wish. And there's a very nice service manual you can download for this thing that tells you about every inch of the laptop. Again, that's one of the advantages of the ThinkPads is that uh, IT departments love to get into these things and tinker around and you have a really nice uh, manual available on the web for doing that. One last thing to talk about, and that is its thermal performance. We like to measure how well these computers do under load. And to do that, we run the 3D Mark stress test, which measures uh, how well it can handle itself getting a pretty intensive graphical benchmark put against it about 20 or 30 times. And we found that it did uh, throttle itself down a little bit under that test. We got a score of 92%. 97% uh, is passing on that test. So you will see some throttling if you are uh, gaming on this thing. And again, I don't think it's very well suited for gaming, but uh, very well suited for the corporate world and the work world in general, uh, provided you're not doing anything all that graphically intensive. So overall, a very nicely built device here that uh, kind of follows along with the ThinkPad. But if you are looking for better graphical or gaming performance, uh, you might want to look at that Yoga 720, which will also save you a couple of bucks too. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Steve Blixt, Stanley Taub, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.